Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Zoo School Live. I'm Caroline, and I'm a zookeeper here at Elma Park Zoo. I'm so happy you could join me today. I'm here with Russet the Cougar, and his sister Yukon is going to be out with us shortly. So right now, what Russet is doing is rubbing his face all over this log because it was in with our Kawada Mundi. So it smells so good to him. So Russet is three and a half years old. We think that he was born in September, so he's going to be four this year. Oh, he loves that. And all around that log, there's also elk fur. So cougars love to rub themselves in the scent of any animal that they can find. <laughs> so Russet came to us from Idaho. He and his sister were in the wild with their mom, and their mom was probably teaching them how to hunt livestock. So she, <coughs> excuse me, she was killed by a rancher who was protecting his animals, but he didn't know that she had cubs. Oh, and there's Miss Yukon coming out to say hello. So when the cubs started showing up, he was able to trap them in his barn, and he called the Idaho Fish and Game Service, who was able to contact us, and they came here to spend the time with us. So they are siblings, and they are absolute best friends. <laughs> they love each other so much. They can often be found curled up together with their little paws crossed together and their faces smushed together. And you can see how close they are right now. They're going to examine everything together. So right while they're close to each other, you can see that Russet is a little bit darker in color and he's just a little bit bigger. So they're not very easy to tell apart if you don't spend a lot of time looking at them. But his head is a little bit bigger. Oh, now Yukon is having so much fun. So her head is a little bit narrower and smaller, and that's typical of a female. She might just be a little bit smaller than he is. So cougars can live in the wild to about 13 years. In captivity, they live between late teens and early 20s. So these guys are still really young yet. Um, they are mostly nocturnal and crepuscular. So what that means is that they're mostly active at nighttime, during the dawn, and during the dusk. So they like to be hidden. And there's not really a big difference between male cougars and female cougars. The biggest difference is the size. So a, fe a female cougar is probably gonna be between 80 pounds and 130 pounds, and a male cougar is probably gonna be between 110 pounds and 200 pounds. Yukon is going to try to climb into that log. So Russet right now is about 125 pounds and Yukon is about 95 pounds. And to put that in perspective in the size of, um, of large size cats, our capybara is bigger than Yukon is. So even though she's longer, they're not really hefty cats, they're really long and lean. Um, so they're actually the second largest cat in the Americas, the first one is the jaguar and they have the widest range of any land mammal in the Western Hemisphere. So we know that they've been around in the Americas, so that's North, Central, and South America, for at least 40,000 years, and they used to be all over, from the East Coast to the West Coast. So as human population, however, increased, and with the westward expansion, and as more land was taken for development, they have been pushed over to the West. So right now, they're mostly in the Western parts of the Americas, but they are still as far north as the Canadian Yukon and as far south as the tip of Argentina, which is in South America. They're mostly on the west coast, but there are some small populations on the east coast, mainly in Florida. You've probably heard of the Florida Panthers. And there's been some rare spottings kind of in the northeast area. So they are what you would call habitat generalists. So because they live in so many different areas. They are really extremely adaptable and they can just live in so many different habitats. So they could survive in the desert, they could live in the forest, they could live in the mountains, they like rocky outcroppings. They really love to live anywhere as long as they can get up high and be sneaky and hidden. It would be very rare to see a cougar in the wild because they mostly like to keep to themselves. So they are what you call ambush predators, which means that they like to hide in a tree or hide behind a rock, and they lie in wait until the last second, and then they jump on their prey. And I forgot to say, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments, and I'll answer them at the end, and then any that I don't answer, I will answer later on the Facebook. Oh, so what Russet has now is called a giggle ball, 
and it makes um, a giggly noise as he bats it around. <laughs> they love to play. They're very curious and they're very playful. And a lot of times they will chase each other right when they come out. They chase each other all around the exhibit. So since he's playing with that, maybe we'll talk about his big paws. They have really big, I like to call them mittens. Um, their paws can be four inches wide. They're really big. And if, if he stands up, you'll see that his back legs are really long. So proportionally, they have the longest legs of all of the larger cats. And that makes them amazing hunters and predators. So he could jump from a standstill. If he was just sitting, he could jump 18 feet straight up in the air, which is as tall as a giraffe. And he could jump 40 feet horizontally. So straight across, he could jump a little bit longer than a yellow school bus. So they're amazing predators. And with those feet, they like to try to stay really hidden. Um, so when they walk, and your cat at home does the same thing, when they walk, their back foot lands in the exact same spot where their front foot was, and that's to minimize their tracks so their prey doesn't see them. So they eat so many different types of things because they live in so many different areas, but they subsist mainly on different types of deer, but they will also hunt really anything that's around. They're what you would call opportunistic. So they'll hunt a javelina, they'll hunt a wild hog, they'll hunt even porcupines with their quills. We're doing some chasing of each other now. They'll hunt porcupines with their quills, they will eat small rodents, they'll go after birds, they will even eat insects and grasshoppers, but they would need a whole lot of grasshoppers to survive. Um, so, you can see how, um, how they like to crouch really low before they go after each other. You kind of might show us that again in a second. So cougars in the wild, if they get a really big deer, they probably won't eat all of it at once because it's probably too big for them. So what they'll do is called cache it. So they will cover it up with as much grass and straw and twigs and leaves as they can find, and then they'll come back to it later. So they don't always have to eat every single day. And they've actually been observed sharing their kills with other cougars, which is really cool because it's kind of making us restructure the way that we look at cougars. Historically, we thought that they were completely solitary, but now researchers are observing them sharing their kills. We've even seen some female cougars raising their cubs with other cougars before they separate when the cougars, when the cubs are old enough. And their territories will also overlap, which is really cool. So if you compare that to our jaguar, who had to be completely separated, the cubs, when they were old enough, and they couldn't cohabitate. But these cougars will be able to stay together for their whole lives, which is really cool that they will have their siblings together. Um, so cougars, because they live in so many different areas and in so many different countries with their own language, they actually have a Guinness World Record for most number of names for an animal. So you could call them a cougar, you could call them a mountain lion, you could call them a catamount, a puma, a panther, a ghost cat, a mountain screamer, a mountain cat, a mountain ghost. There are so many different names that they could be called. But we mostly call them cougars here. We do a lot of different training with these guys. They're very smart. So um, they know how to come up to us and they'll touch this target stick with their nose. They know how to touch it with their nose. They know how to um, sit, they'll stand up for us, they'll lay down for us, they will open their mouths for us so we can see their teeth, they'll let us give their vaccinations in their hip, and we're working on a tail blood draw, which we do from the tail, so we have them lay down, and then we have this snake hook that we grab their tail with, and they let us do all of that, and it's completely voluntary, so if they didn't want to do it with us, they would just walk away and we would say, okay, that's fine. So Yukon in here spends, which is the one that's right up front, she spends a lot of her time way up high on that wall that's up there because she loves to be able to see everything that's going on. So she can see the elk back there, she can see the bison, and Russet likes to spend his time in this big tall tree over here. Oh, so if we look at this log, and Yukon might do it, 
while we're here. Um, they love, just like your cat at home, they love to scratch things. Oh, here comes Russet. Whee! <laughs> so they love to scratch things. So usually they come right out and they go right up to it and they just dig their claws into it and it helps sharpen their claws. So I have a couple questions. Um, Saya wants to know how fast do they run? Good question. They can run up to 45 miles per hour, which is very, very fast, but they can't do it for long periods of time. So they would do that if they, if they had just jumped after their prey and they were running after it. Um, Callie wants to know, do we know where their other family members are? Good question, Callie. We don't know where their other family members are because they were orphaned in the wild. So we don't know how many other family members they have, but they have each other here. Um, Emily wants to know which one is older. We also don't know that, and that's also a good question. They were probably born just minutes apart. Cougar cubs, cougar, cougar moms usually have between one and six cubs and they have them at the same time. Liam and Ronan want to know, what are they eating in that hollow log? So they were not eating, they were rubbing their face all over it because it was in with our Kawana Mundi. So it smelled really good. And they love to just anoint themselves. They love to put scents all over themselves. Oh, there they go. So, um, Yukon and Russet are the names of the cougars, and they are three and a half years old. Um, I don't know if I finished that question. So yeah, they love to anoint themselves with scent and put them all over, all over their bodies. Jenna wants to know, do you brush their teeth? Good question, Jenna. So we don't brush their teeth. They have, um, they chew on bones and they will chew on their food and that helps clean their food. So right there, she showed you um, she just showed you how great she is at jumping with those big back legs. Um, so they don't, but we have them open their mouths for us so that we can look at them whenever we need to. And they do get annual examinations by our veterinarian who will do dental with them. So once a year, they do get their teeth cleaned up. Zachary wants to know, what is their favorite food? Um, right now, they seem to really love beef. They are loving beef right now. They also love, um, they like quail. They like any, any really small mammal or bird they really love. Ellington wants to know, what do they eat? Good question. So they get a variety of different things. They get a food that's formulated for zoo cats that's called Nebraska. And they get a certain amount of that every day. And then they also get what we call whole prey. So that could be a whole rat or a whole chick. Sometimes it's fish and they really love that, the, that whole prey. Megan wants to know, how did they get their names? Good question. So since they came from Idaho, we named them potato names, like Idaho potatoes. So Russet and Yukon. Hunter wants to know, do they have babies? Good question. They don't have babies. They are siblings and Yukon is spayed, so that wouldn't happen. Zach wants to know, do they climb trees? Yes. So a cougar's favorite place to be is way up high. And they've got those big paws and those big strong back legs that help them just bound right up the tree. Yukon um, can go from the ground to the top of her wall in one jump. And Russet probably could do it with his tree, but he uses the uh, nice branches to walk up. Owen wants to know, do they hibernate in the winter? They don't hibernate in the winter. So cougars love the cold. You can see how hairy they are and how fuzzy they are. They absolutely love the cold. They are out here in the snow, rolling around. They love it. We'll even give them access inside when it's cold and they will spend their whole day outside anyway. Erin wants to know, what do their paws look like? That is a good question. I will show you in just a second. We'll see if Yukon is going to take a big leap. So you can see how she's squatting down right there and how she's holding her tail low to the ground. She uses that tail for balance. So they have those big, long tails. 
And when, if Russ goes up the tree, he also might show us how he uses that big tail, almost like a rudder, like you would have in a boat. So let me show Aaron what their paws look like. So this is a cast of one. They have these four toes up here. When they walk, they typically retract their claws. So in their marks in the wild, you wouldn't see their claw prints. I also have, so this is a print of, of theirs. Um, this one right here is Russet, and this one is Yukon. So they can be four inches across, which is pretty big. Mark, are pumas like panthers? Yes, Mark, that is a really good question. So panther is one of the terms that we use to describe large cats. Um, and I forgot to go over this earlier. So cougars are technically considered small cats and that is because of their ability to purr. So large cats can't purr because of a bone that they have in their throat that is kind of a little bit loose. So cougars have this bone, everyone has this bone. We have it, cats have it. But in the smaller cats, they have this bone that is connected to their tongue and to their windpipe. And when their voice box vibrates, it sends it right up to the bone and the bone is kind of loose. So it vibrates and that's what creates the purring sound. Um, but large cats, that bone is not completely solid, not completely rigid, so it doesn't vibrate and that's what creates the roar sound. Cougars can make a whole lot of different noises. Um, they can make a chirp that sounds like a little bird that these guys do a lot. They could make a scream, they could do a screech, um, they could do a yowl, they can meow. So a panther, even though it technically refers to a large cat, is a lot of times used to describe, um, a, a big cat I mean, is used to describe any of the large cats. Um, Katarina wants to know, will they eventually have to separate? We hope not. They should be able to live together for the rest of their lives. They get along so well and they are just best friends. So we hope that they will. RJ, how strong is their bite? That's a good question. They have a very strong bite. I have a, a skull here. So you can see how big their front teeth are. Um, so they have a pretty strong bite. It's not as strong as a jaguar's. A jaguar has the strongest bite for its many cats, but it's pretty strong. And it would have to be to take down moose and big deer. John, are cougars dangerous to people? John, they can be, but we're very fortunate that cougars really like to hide from people. They don't like to be seen. Um, the only reason you would probably see a cougar is if they were hungry and they didn't have um, enough land or any animals around them, so they had to come into civilization. Um, but anything, anything with teeth pretty much can be dangerous. Hello to the kindergarten red team from White Marsh Elementary. We're so glad you're with us. Linda wants to know, since they can jump so high, what keeps them in their enclosure? That is a good question. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera through the light, but they have what's called zoo mesh. You can see all those little lines up there. So that is really, really strong, and they would not be able to get through it. And that's what keeps them in there. And we keep lots of really fun, exciting things in there. Um, so they're pretty comfortable in here. They don't typically try to leave. Aaron wants to know, are they active at night? So most cougars would be in the wild active at night and at the dawn and the dusk, but they are active during the day as well. And we were able to switch the activity level of these guys so that they are, they mostly nap at night and then they're active during the day. Um, Ellington wants to know, where do they sleep at the zoo? So they have some stalls inside that are connected to this exhibit, and they have some shelves, and they have some straw beds, straw and hay beds that they sleep in. And sometimes they sleep curled up together, and sometimes they sleep in opposite corners, um, laid out and splayed out. So 
these guys are just so much fun. I'm glad that they are having so much fun right now. So you get to see how cool they are. Um, Lily wants to know, do they have any predators? So that's a good question. They don't have any natural predators besides humans. So in the wild, they might encounter a bear or a wolf or a jaguar, but they wouldn't really go after each other. They mostly might compete over food, but otherwise they wouldn't really go after each other. So their, their main predator is mostly humans through habitat loss um, and, and deforestation. Preston wants to know, how long does it take to train them and is it scary to be that close to them? So those are really good questions. And training is one of my favorite things to do with them. Um, so the first, the second question, um, it's always, you're always aware that this is a very large cat with very large teeth. So I know that I'm going to be safe because I know there's always gonna be a fence between us and I know that it's a secure fence. But I'm always aware that that is a big cat um, so I don't, I don't ever stick my fingers through the fencing or I don't put myself in a situation where I could get hurt. So they, how long does it take to train them? It depends on the behavior that you're trying to train. These guys are really smart and they're just so food motivated, so they'll pick it up really quick. Russet right now knows how to, I just taught him, I think in a matter of two days, how to, from a sitting position, only put his left paw up on the fence for me. So mostly they are just pretty quick with it. Um, so Ellington wants to know, oh, we answered that one. Augie wants to know, how do you tell them apart? So it's pretty, for if you stare at them a whole lot, it's pretty easy, but it's very subtle. So this is Russet right here, the male with us. And he's a little bit darker in color, a little more red russet colored than Yukon is. Um, and he's a little bit bigger. If he looks at us again, we can see how his head is also bigger and wider. I always say he has a big, a big Mickey Mouse head because he has just a big head and he's got these perfect round ears. Um, so our last question. Marissa wants to know, what is your favorite part of working with the cougars? So I trained both of them, and one of my favorite things to do is training with them uh, because they really are so smart. And also what we're doing right now, which is just watch them play and watch them have so much fun with each other. It's very rewarding when you're taking care of them to see how much fun they're having. So we hope that you enjoyed all of these fun cougar facts, and I hope you learned a lot. If I didn't answer any of your questions, I'm going to log on to the Facebook later, and I will answer them all for you. And again, this was Russet and Yukon, our cougars here at Elmwood Park Zoo. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.